If you've ever imagined yourself inside the story of Leda and the Swan, maybe you were the gorgeous, helpless Leda, or maybe you were the ravenous Zeus. No matter who you wanted to be, if you put yourself in that lusty creation myth and thought, boy, the Greeks have it good, then you are going to love Nora Labiner's incestuous rhythmic tale, Let the Dark Flower Blossom. The rhythm is me, the rhythm has control, the rhythm is inside me. At the Book Expo last month, I forced myself on a cool indie publisher called Coffee House Press and begged them to let me review one of their new books. Mouse over the video to learn more about Coffee House Press and their mission. Then two weeks ago, I was sent Let the Dark Flower Blossom, which sounds kind of like a quasi self-help journaling tutorial for women, but is in fact a sexy, murderous, literary, snow-filled epic, and actually lots of fun. I crept downstairs to the kitchen. I remember my hand on the door that led down to the cellar. That door was always locked. I turned my wrist. The door opened. What did I do? The story follows three compelling characters. Roman Stone, a bad boy novelist Lothario, who shags first and asks questions never. And two tragic fraternal twins, Sheldon and Eloise Shell, who have both been seduced by him. There is some gnawing, awful secret that the three of them share. Was it a savage murder in the snow? Or a naked act of incest? Or a parricide? Or an arson? And worst of all, if one of them confesses to a crime, should we believe them? I stood before him. I said, how do I find the perfect story? My father was silent. I waited. I waited for him to speak. He said nothing. He looked down at his paper. He began to write. Nora Labiner is one of those writers you won't hear of until she wins the Pulitzer. She is a craftsperson of the highest skill, and yet maybe a little too smart for her own good. This particular story is written as a kind of verse novel, with the prose broken up over single and double lines, or freed of punctuation altogether. And while sometimes it gets a little too clever, impenetrably so, ultimately it's so compelling and dark that you push through your confusion so you can get to the juicy bits. Mouse over the video to learn more about the author and her other works. Just then I heard footsteps. A ghost? It was no ghost. My sister stood in her white nightgown. She had followed me. She came into the light. My father looked at us with a kind of astonishment. We looked so much alike, you see. So, if you don't want to work for your fiction, then this is not the book for you. Nora Labiner doesn't make it easy. She conflates, she masks, she hides, she makes you suffer for your supper. She doesn't hand it to you on a plate, she makes you sit under the table and hope for succulent scraps. But like all good things, they come to those who wait. And Let the Dark Flower Blossom ultimately gives you the whole feast, along with a wonderful view under the tablecloth. He gave her his hand and she took it. She opened his palm. In it was a small gold key. My father turned. He held a box. He gave me the box. He gave my sister the key. He gave me a box. A wooden box. Long gone now. It was the perfect box for my story.